Looking at Raman spectrometers, there is a confusing number of options, starting with the laser wavelength. But why would the laser matter? Well, that's the topic for today's episode of Raman TV. Raman lasers come in all shapes, sizes and colors. Popular ones are 532 yaks and 638 or 785 nanometer laser diodes. Have your pick. But what you find on the x-axis of a Raman spectrum is not a wavelength, it's the Raman shift, the frequency difference between the incoming laser and the scattered light. So the laser wavelengths should just drop out, right? Why are there all these different laser options then? See, the laser excites more than just Raman. Most common is additional fluorescence from the sample, which can actually be quite strong. Unlike Raman though, which is just scattered light, with fluorescence the light is first absorbed and then emitted. And absorption only happens over a specific wavelength region. Thus, with the right laser you can avoid the absorption and hence the fluorescence. So which wavelengths should you pick then? Well, that depends on your sample. A good wavelength to start with for anything geological or inorganic um, is a blue or green laser, say 532 nanometer. But you might want to avoid 532 for organic or biological samples. Here you'd better move up to 785 or 830 nanometer. Or just go all the way to 1064. You should be safe from fluorescence there, but this wavelength also needs a different detector with smaller signal and it's more expensive. Well, guess even with Raman, there's no free lunch. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Raman TV.